Hey everybody, welcome to this episode 142 of Fight Chat Friday. So today we're going to look at the minus 62 junior male division from the recent European Championships. So this is between um, Dennis from Ukraine and Baha from Spain. So good, solid juniors, I have to say. Usually the, the junior division doesn't have people with such solid fundamentals so early on as these two guys. So I think that actually ended up in the result of this fight being a little bit more cagey than you expect then as well. Uh, yeah, these guys were kind of happens. dominating coming through the round. So this final then was a close match one. So a little bit more cagey. Yeah, definitely. Let's jump right into round one and we'll see a little bit of what we were talking about right there. As you said, both guys have a very good appreciation of their space in the ring and their distance and then what uh, attacking and defensive options are available to each other and I think probably have each other well studied and know each other well so we do get a very cagey opening and very often we're getting those kind of uh, I go you go kind of trades which you know not like what we see with the yellow belts but on this level you know real attempts to carry but well judged and well avoided by the, uh, the opponent each time yeah, and we have Dennis here in red and Baha in blue. So we see this one here. He's escaping the corner pretty well. So he tries to fire back to get space back and then tries to switch Dolly underneath. Doesn't pay off because Baha doesn't bite and then that opens the corner for him to sneak out. I like Baha's return to the center here. Actually, he gets back and holds the center pretty well. So that's a very high level skill that's important to this run. Didn't have too many warnings in the end compared to what we see usually and obviously not too many restarts as a result. But we see a lot of testing from the front leg in particular here. So the guys are trying to just fight for space. And when they get squeezed a little bit, you see them just take space back with the front leg carry. And we'll see later in statistics, the front leg carries are quite high in this fight. Yeah, definitely. It's their mechanism to control distance, take space and, uh, and make sure they're not overly pushed. Again, this first uh, attempt to go to hands, uh, it does look like uh, you know, the glove may have covered it. It may have been a score. We can't see the scoreboard from where we are. Um, but certainly as far as the interaction goes, uh, you know, it there was something had to break up this right versus left battle. So whether it was going yeah. to be hands on the direct line or someone uh, as uh, Dennis attempted earlier, made an angle and looked to work around the front leg, there had to be something to open it up because otherwise it's just who's going to control the distance better and they were very, very equal. Yeah, Baha does a great job of that uh, springboard, we call it, of lifting the front leg and then using it to come in again, like we see here. Uh, yeah, I quite uh, like Dennis this short one. a little one. bit more of a traditional psychic. Yeah, it's, it's a nice one to gain distance, drop and go again. And he's quite flexy. He can get to that head pretty well, as we can see in this fight. Uh, but Dennis is a big fan on the left versus right of coming underneath on that back leg turning kick, like we see here. He's actually quite solid at that. But... Um, I had a great job of coming through with the hands. So that's important as well that when you're using that front leg and springboard, that if there's a counter coming that you can burst through and push the pace backs to make sure they don't get that clear score. And I mean, we saw it with the uh, the minus 57 seniors as well with, you know, uh, uh, the older Talhawi uh, brother and uh, uh, Finn from Ireland, you know, where they're both capable of delivering a real threat with that front leg. It becomes a whole question of, okay, who's going to vary it up best? Who's going to be able to show some differentiation of the threat? Maybe, you know, some longer kicks. And as, as we had there with Baha, that like that very short lift on the first one, setting up the trampoline and then the carry through into hands. You know, that was just a little something that created a difference uh, in that first round. And you very often have this where he goes into the second round slightly ahead and that creates an incentive to both sides to do a bit of work or to change, you know, to recognize the change in the game state. And round two plays off just a little bit differently, I think. Yeah, so if we look at the first round of controllables, I think uh, Baha controlled the distance a little bit better mm. and he controlled the tempo a little bit better as well, where we see like the second round usually has a switch in one of those if there's going to be a swing in the tide and that's what we've seen. So, so far, it's a bit cagey. Front leg battle and Baha tried to push through with the hands a few times. One of his biggest weapons that we've seen in his earlier fights and previous fights is his backhand coming through to counter a sidekick. Maybe Dennis knows this, but he's not given much options of like lazy carries. Any sidekicks he have are quite direct and strong. And we'll see it come into the second round that actually is a problem then for Baha in this fight and ends up being a clear score. Yeah, I think what he does well is he disguises any steps that he does have and he starts his carries from that bit further back. So it's not a very tempting offer for that backhand, is it? Yeah, so here we see the front leg busy again on both guys. They're trying to just test and push back. 
Again, Dennis looking for that back leg turning kick underneath, which he loves so much. And then we see the, the intensity is upped a little bit here in terms of the footwork and the testing. Again, both guys cancelling out the front legs. And there we see Dennis going for his first attempt of a blitz to no avail so far. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting. There's two occasions where Dennis goes to the blitz and uh, Baha kind of uh, goes for the bump. So he just he stands his ground, lets his head slip out of the way, and you know there's no score on the blitz. But you know this one, I think he's a little bit harsh done by to get the warning because he hasn't pushed forward. He's just stood his ground, got his head out of the way, and you know not getting punched shouldn't be a warning to my mind. Uh, so yeah. you know a little bit unlucky there and because he's been given the warning I'm not sure was he given the turning kick afterwards or you know was there uh, any other advantage gained out of it yeah just for some of the people who may not know Adrian do you want to go through what you mean by a bump after a blitz yeah so we'll just take that, uh, a quick look at this again so uh, we're getting some body body contact because the head's come out of the way but you can see Baha goes directly into continuation, so it doesn't interrupt the flow of the match. But sometimes we do see that will happen. The referee will kind of go, okay, maybe it was uh, pushing or, you know, give something else there. And the, the bump could be something maybe a little bit more deliberate where the body is pushed forward in uh, to meet the opponent. But when we look at how you have to defend a blitz, if the opponent is coming directly towards you and you haven't had the ability to kind of make your own distance or cut an angle... Well, getting your head out of the way is just necessary to avoid the score. So I, I, I don't, you know, it, it's just defensive uh, body positioning, really. Yeah, and we actually praised James last week in our last video about uh, his reversals there of how he was able to come around, and he was using it really well. And it was actually quite similar here. He's ducking the head and pulling around to the angle. Mm. So it's quite similar, but just a uh, different view from a different referee, obviously. So back here, we see more lots of testing again. Two guys kind of holding the center a bit more. This one in particular from Dennis. He was a bit more keen to be on the edges in the first round. Again, looking for that entry for hands, both guys, but both of them are very, very sharp. They're not getting caught with anything sloppy but again we see the bump of the bodies and bodies coming into contact again i like this slip underneath and coming around the back but yeah. there's a chance you get caught for holding here as you can see i don't have um, really any but, disagreement with this one because his right arm does get caught around the waist and yeah. uh you know that's you know i think the referee's bang on there with that uh with that warning and there we have it i think that was one of the biggest scores in the match that uh long straight clear side kick onto the hip yeah, so we see Baha's looking for that back and he steps through, he gives him the option, but the distance that Dennis gets on that is actually lovely and he pushes his head back as well um, and then he looks for the continuation, doesn't settle just for the side kick, fair play to Baha, he's after giving away a big score and looks to get it back straight away, which most people do, hence why we always say that the back kick by another back kick usually sets itself up because people are keen to get a score back right away. He does that, hook kick comes in and then there's a spin. So I think uh, if we slow that down, we can see Dennis tries to take the space back with a long, straight, direct line to the hip. Then we see two high kicks coming in. They kind of cancel each other out. Baha looks to push again, and he forces the spin. And we always say that the two biggest reasons you see warnings are for spinning and falling over mm -hmm. and leaving the ring. So there we go again. I do think that the spin and fall over there is actually the correct choice, though, because if he continues to go yeah. backwards... You know, uh, Baha potentially builds up the uh, the momentum and uh, you may end up conceding a score before leaving the ring. I like this as well. This is, you know, a little bit of a split rhythm, but it's also just the, the commitment to, you know, I, I'm not going to let the fact that the first go didn't work, like dwell. I'm not going to give up on my plan because of that. And pushing again immediately into the blitz, I think was, uh, you know, quite an interesting option, you know, and, and, and definitely got some return. Um, I... I you know the way i'm looking at that is i don't know if it's something that you start out and you plan to do but it's like okay uh there's been a score perhaps there all right now i go in and i take my own turn back so it just resets the momentum it's like going from juice to advantage and back to juice it's uh you know it, it's just clearing the board again yeah like it, it is a great thing in terms of how it worked out for dennis but i miss i would love to see the context of the scoreboard there yeah i'm assuming he was winning and then he went forward with the hands and that actually gave him, as you said, it kind of relieved the pressure for a split second so he can move like he does here. But the only problem with that then is if that went another way and Baha got that clear score, you're saying, why are you attacking when you're up on the board with a couple of seconds left? So, you know, yeah. it, it worked out really well for him, but on another day, maybe it wouldn't have worked out. Again, towards the end of that uh, little scene there, we see Baha looking for that backhand that he's quite good at. He gets some serious reach on that be fair um but obviously match was pretty much done by then 
crafty guy who's in the final there isn't going to throw that away in the last couple of seconds on the edge of the ring. He's just going to take that last warning and step out, which actually ends up on five, I think, where yes. Baja has the six. So he had that little leverage to take that last warning in the last nine seconds as well, which is always useful. And there is a massive, massive difference between five and six warnings. You know, that's... Yeah. That is one of the things. And we'll see this as we kind of look into our visuals uh, and uh, have a look at some of the uh, the warnings. So you can see just that slight difference between um, uh, the two guys there at the end with the warnings. And, uh, you know, in a 2-0 match that was as close as that, you give the warnings yep. an awful lot of weight. Well, see, like the fact that Dennis had four means that he could comfortably take the fifth. Yeah. Whereas if you're on five, you're taking the six. It's changing the story big time. You know what I mean? So just be by one warning, it makes a big difference in the comfort that you have. Um, so ideally, you don't want to be giving away too many warnings early in the match because you, you're going to probably need them at some stage towards the end, especially in a very close contest like this. It ended up in a 2-0 decision at the end. Uh, just for some context here as well, guys, we know that obviously Dennis is in the red corner although his color is blue so i went with the country's color of ukraine blue and yellow and spain yellow and red just for context there so that the bigger bar blue for dennis and red for baja is the attempted shots for each technique okay yeah. so a lot of front leg carries like obviously he's not trying to land every single one of those but he's still lifting the leg take some space back particularly for baja and we see there's a big difference there on that one um, but then he gets that little bit more contact as a result as well. So you see his yellow as a result, his volume is much higher. So he gets a little bit more contact yeah. with it as well, which then begs the question, what comes next? So if you get that contact with the front leg carry, he didn't score too many psychics. So, so what comes next is the big question. Yeah. And I mean, obviously we saw where the, uh, uh, the best effect tended to come from hands, uh, but there just weren't many attempts on the hands. We can see there in the second last block. Um, that we only had a couple of attempts on hands from both parties. Uh, but if you look at the return in terms of getting into contact with the hands, it's relatively high. Uh, so I think that, you know, that definitely tells its own little story. Um, you well, know, the, I, the hands did play a big factor, Adrian, because it was the defensive psychics and the psychics, which, which were the big scores in this match, I feel. Now, yeah. not seeing the scoreboards in real time, I don't know, but I'm assuming that's where the big scores came from. Um, so obviously that happens as a result of um, hands. An attempt to so go to whether hands. it's an exchange with, with blitz, whether you're getting it with the backhand or whether you're coming through just with regular punching, like that that all has to happen first before you can get the defensive psychic in realistically. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll look at the uh, the other version of that, just you can kind of uh, see the numbers behind it. Um, and I think that for me, it's really, really interesting if you look at the overall activity level. And one of the messages that we can take from this, even though the result of this particular match doesn't carry it out exactly, but we can say, having looked at the stats of an awful lot of matches over a number of years, a higher work rate is critical to not having a match be this close most of the time. So in other words, if you are putting in more attempts and if you are outworking your opponent, given that there isn't, there, you know, if there isn't too big a differentiation in the skill level, Normally, the person who puts more work into it, makes more attempts, does actually end up with more scores. And the simple way to think about it, this is if you're looking at football at the weekend, uh, the team that has the most shots on target is usually the one that wins. Because um, yeah. most, you know, they're, they're more likely to convert a few of them into scores. Um, and it's very, very much what we have. So the, the one thing we can see, though, is, you know, with that front leg carry, with the, um, the number of sidekicks thrown, uh, it didn't you know, bear out that the fact that they were thrown didn't bring them into contact as much as you'd like. Yeah, like I feel personally that the six warnings here for Baja is a big factor. I reckon yeah. if he didn't have that six warning that potentially this would have been a different contest because as you can see from the, the numbers there, they're quite similar in their output. A little bit more higher volume overall from Baja, but he didn't get the same um, contact as for like percentage wise compared to Dennis but like if we compare this to the last one that we did between James Toot and Timothy Boss yeah there was a complete different story there the guys had a way higher volume in the the senior minus 70 division there compared to this but these guys just a little bit cagier which means the warnings come into it way more and as well if it's a closer fight like there's going to be like one or two scores max between it so it's hard for you to make the difference there in a very cagey fight whereas you said as you said earlier Adrian, you need that higher volume and obviously more contact and more scores um if you want to kind of take over from your opponent not leave it in the the hands of the warnings let's say 
but I think that's where if you look at those four blitzes that were thrown by uh, Dennis, they forced at least two warnings. Uh, so Good point. you know yeah. when we look at you know maybe he didn't get the score or the return on the scoreboard that he was looking for out of those blitzes, but what he did get and what eventually did tell is the warnings. Uh, you know, and we highlighted uh, a little bit of that when we came to the, the that first bump in particular. Um, yeah. But the warnings in terms of defending the blitzes or closing off the blitzes definitely uh, added up over the course of the match. Yeah. No, good fight. Um, two solid guys. I'm excited to see what those two lads do senior. I don't know when they're going to be senior, but I'm sure they'll be around for a while and we'll get to see them uh, test their skills against the big boys. But yeah, that's where we're at the minute. If you're looking for another fight for us to cover with the statistical breakdown that we've been doing lately, let us know. Uh, we also have some exciting news coming real soon about a seminar that we're doing. Kikidi Coach Academy are going to be doing another seminar towards the end of the year, just after the summer. So stay tuned to that and our socials for the update on that one. Awesome. So that's it, folks. We will see you next Friday. We'll see you in the next one.